the bro? Hold on, wondering man. How can I help you? Uh. Hold on. Murder, huh? That sounds like a lot of hard work. You'd never see me investigating a murder. Uh, no idea. That's what okay. Me. I have no idea what I'm doing either. <laughs> I don't even know what day it is. Don't tell me. It's a better day that way. Oh, I feel you, man. I don't even know what today is. I think it's a uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, one or the other. Sorry, busy surveying the situation. I'm sure you'll figure something out. You guys have all sorts of gadgets these days. Wiretapping, telescopic batons, futuristic circuit bending to infiltrate harbor machinery. Maybe you could even knock that Kvaltsen crane over using some remote controls. Or calling in tactical air support. You guys have air support, right? I'm pretty sure we don't. I get it. Hush hush about the secret technology. Something changes in his disposition. A merciful smile in the corner of his eye. All right, I may have some advice for you on how to deal with Jean-Luc there, out of solidarity to the RCM. It's low ah. on technology, however. What's up? First, don't fight him, obviously. Second, get him to share his theory by being subordinate. Admit your lack of expertise. Basically, grub him. That's how I do it. You're welcome. Hmm, maybe that would work. We'll have to see. Oh, yeah. So? Uh, fuck. Okay. Kuno's a giver like that, yes? Kuno sent your fat ass running around like jello. Look, pig. Kuno sent you to rough some people up. Kuno played you. That happened. Now you and Kuno should move on. Good idea. <laughs> yes, yeah, let's move that's on. That's what Kuno said. Don't be saying what Kuno said back to Kuno. Get the fuck out of here, Parrot and Kuno. <laughs> After this shit, you better have something real interesting to say if you want to stay in Kuno's face. It's magnesium, yeah, right? it's the mag. You fucking need that shit to stay on top of your game. Kuno goes through like a tube a day, rips mag like a motherfucker, and you could use a battle. Oh, don't teach him, Kuno. He's going to use it against you, Kuno. You're not getting this, pig. It completely takes away the hangover. It's like you didn't do anything. Like you stayed on playing with your choo-choo. Fuck you, pig. Don't do mag. You're going to OD and you're going to fucking die. All right. Of course you fucking can. How do you think Kuno made all the docky boys his gimps? Just got to fly, pig. Kuno knows. Kuno and C saw you shit yourself. It's okay, pig. Not everyone can face the fear Kuno style. That's all there is to it, then. Don't be a pansy. Just jump. Yeah. Good call, Pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. He's on your crime scene, bossing you around. And he's been here for some time, too. This is where he hangs out. Get your snout out of Kuno's eye. You should give up, Popo, or the Kun will keep fucking it out of you. Are you okay, Kuno? That went wrong. He took it as a compliment. Then he had a minor seizure. Who could tell Someone me more? more educated in sweeping matters. Maybe you should ask. No. no. I'm not <laughs> an encyclopedia. Hey, the music tightened me up. I've got this for sure. And now, now I've probably got this shit in the bag. A tarpaulin cloak is still caught on the railing. Oh yeah, no come one on. Has claimed it for the yeah. Time. As you leap in the air, a chilly breeze engulfs you, sharpening your senses. Ankles tingling from the tension, blood roaring in your ears. You are ready for your rendezvous with the concrete pavement below. Martinez goes about its daily routine as you soar through the air. The loud voices of protesters mix with the engine sounds from the traffic jam. Waves crash against the pier and dense, salty sea air fills your lungs. Oh, hell yeah. It's so on the money, Bratan! Just imagine yourself jewel-wielding a bottle and a flaming cigarette whilst airborne! <laughs> the corpse is dominating the yard, and the stench is nauseating. Even so far from the epicenter, Damn. it brings tears to your eyes. 
As the concrete floor welcomes you, you realize it's been a while since you felt so alive. Alert, capable, must be the adrenaline. I knew you could do it. My climbing down might not have been as disco as your jump, but at least we can explore the harbor now. With your feet firmly planted on the concrete, the noise of the harbor rushes back in. Hell yeah, that jump was fucking disco as hell. Give me my fucking policeman coat. Ho oh, ho, oh, bottles for days. Oh my god, I'm rich! Ooh, is that a magazine or a book? Oh, it's a book, sweet. The machine swallows your coin and seems to be waiting for your next move. Your fingers run over the dial Holy pad. Holy shit. Zero, zero, five. That's the dialing code for Revachol. Four, nine, five, two and a moment of hesitation before entering the final numbers. Nine, nine, three. Calling. Calling. Still calling. Then. Video Revachal, 24 hour video rental. We rent eight and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lummy, how may I help you? What is this Video Revachal, it's a 24 hour video rental. We rent eight and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lummy. Uh, no man, what Sir, is this I don't know. Me? It's a video rental. <laughs> Maybe you rent videos here. Do you know no. me? No. Oh. Why do Maybe I call you? Maybe you call to extend your rental period. Do you need to extend your rental period? Yeah. Maybe I'll know my name. If you need any further assistance, you can visit us on the corner of Voyager Main. I can't help you over the phone. Are we done? He thinks you're pulling a prank on him. On the corner of Voyager and Main, a large neon sign hangs on the side of a building. Video River Show, 24 hours. Oh. It's raining, and there is almost no traffic on the street. A woman's footprints in the mud lead away from the front door. Tiny heels tiptoeing down the road. Beautiful steps, light-footed, with a lifetime ahead of them. You look up, and the air seems to grow darker. Suddenly, you feel like you don't want to hear about video rentals anymore. You don't want to hear about any of it. It was all shit. It's over. But what was all it. that shit? That's all enough right. for you today. Let's conclude this call. Huh. Alright, so now we're trapped in here. Cool. Okay, alright. It's the this. ledger you found in the trash. A cabbage of papers hanging from the board. It's not. A hot flash of rage comes over you. For a moment there, before it recedes, you feel as though you might just squeeze a tear of anger out of your duct. It makes you wonder. Why? It's unjust, that's why. You can't even get to that thing anymore. The ledger quivers in your hand as it shakes the pages rustle. This pathetic mess suddenly afraid of you for some reason. Container, container, I'll turn you nice and red. Container, container, put the logos on. The accent is so thick it's impossible not to notice he's Ubi from the vanishing peninsula of Ubisund on Moindi. Container, container, used to be well pines. Container, container, now belongs to Everard. Everard. Everard, 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 he looks after everyone. Huh? Well, hey there, how can I help you, mister? The look in his deep blue eyes is as sincere as you've ever seen. Kind of makes you feel like an arsehole for no apparent reason. Oh, I'm containers. just making some covers for them containers here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So it's easier for the... The containers in the yard are green in Wild Pines livery, and the mountains rising behind Leo is all red in Union colors. It's like some red infection was spreading outwards from the container yard's core. Yes, they are hiding it from the inside. All the red containers have the Debarders Union logo on them. No, not really. Miss Everett doesn't tell me all the big things. Says I go and tell them to everyone. Hmm. Oh, no trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all. We're on a strike. The whole union is. You don't have to work when you're on strike. Ha! We haven't worked for two months now. So no one is working? <laughs> not everyone is down there, of course. Mr. Everard is in his office, where he always is. And Jean-Luc is guarding the gate. 
but Titus and his boys got into some drunken trouble and Everard sent them on a nice vacation for a week or so. Oh, I'm not really supposed to talk about that. That's union business. Him and his boys stirred up something in town, probably drank too much and got into a fight or something. I heard Mr. Everett telling them to take some time off. Don't go all bad cop on this simple, friendly fellow. Yeah. But what did they actually do? I guess the boys got a bit too rowdy and had to let out some steam. I don't really know the details. That's just how boys are, you know. <laughs> I haven't been in a fight since I was in middle school. Oh, hell yeah. Easy, Leo. Let's keep this on the hearties. Too late. Leo's mouth is still moving, and the words are spewing forth. Words, words, and look, even more words. This guy could go on till the end of days. Now he's talking about some drunk sawmill owner who... No, he already switched to a prized fishing rod he apparently owned at some point. You know what? Just cut in there with your questions. Yes, yes. Everybody needs a job, and this is mine. I'm Leonard, by the way. Leonard Bellick. But everyone calls me Leo. I'm like Mr. Edgar's right-hand man when Mr. Edgar is out of town. And Mr. Edgar's right-hand man when Mr. Edgar is away. <laughs> Actually, Miss Beaufort is the right-hand man, but she's a lady. <laughs> Who is this Miss Beaufort? A real pretty lady with a skin like those Due Sucre candy bars my missus likes so much. Them are real nice to suckle on once the dinner is done and me and the missus sit down beside the radio. But I can't listen to the radio all the time. There's so much to do around here and I'm always busy keeping things running here. Yes I am, yes I am. Stay on this Miss Beaufort topic. Yeah. Oh Lizzie, she is a real sharp tool. Mr. Everett put her through some fancy school and everything, east of the river. Four years she was gone, and when she came back, she was all fancy and lawyerly. But she's a real nice girl. Grew up in this here neighborhood. Knows everybody and gets along with everyone. Real pillar of the community one day, I'm sure. For a fraction of a second, there's sadness in his eyes. If me missus and me was to have a child, I'd be real happy if she turned out like her. But she can't have kids. Aww. Dr. Lemaitre said so. And she knows about such things. Been a doctor for almost 50 years, she has. So Everett trained a lawyer named Miss Beaufort. Interesting. Uh, I think you're doing a great job, Ryan. Yes, Leo. this place really seems to run like clockwork. Keep it up, Leo. Hey! I just got, I just got a trophy for being the goodest of the good cops. Well, thanks a lot. Coming uh, from you, it means a lot, really. Yeah. Sometimes I feel some of the guys don't really get how much I bust my ass for them here. But you guys are all right. Yeah. The white rectangle on your clothes might not mean an awful lot in Martinez, but the recognition from an authority figure made Leo's day. Aww. Uh, you're oh, you, yes. Right? Born and raised in Arayish, mister. Mum had to leave my dad after he got a bit violent. Took us here to the new new world. Ah. I was about ten then. Too old to lose my accent then. Ah. People say us Ubis are up to all sorts of trouble with sheep and other animals and whatnot. I just want you to know there was never any of that where I come from. No, sir. Those are just nasty rumors. Thank hey. you for clarifying that, sir. <laughs> Alright, uh, I'm looking for the leader. Oh, you want Mr. Everett then? He's an awfully nice fellow, he is. Him and his brother are both nice fellows. They've lived their entire lives in this here neighborhood. Guys like Mr. Ever and Mr. Edgar, his brother, are real good guys. Made Martinez what it is today. Mr. Ever and Mr. Edgar and I went to the same school we did when we were boys. Cool, but uh, Oh, Mr. Ever is, is usually in his office, of course. But you gotta be quick if you wanna see him. He leaves around 10 p.m. Oh shit, he said 10 p.m. Bye -bye That's now. crazy. Oh, it's almost fucking, uh... It's almost time for him to go, so it's a good thing that I just got here. Ooh. Hell yeah. Alright, what's up, Before buddy? Before you is a walrus of a man, seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. With great effort, he straightens himself up 
in his chair, yet says nothing. Let's get straight to business. Dead Welcome, body Mr. Entry. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi. It's good of you two to stop by. Please, have a seat. I'm Everard, Everard Clare, head of the Debardes Union here in Martinez. I'd offer you my hand, but unfortunately, my health prevents me from getting up. You understand? He looks extremely comfortable. The tiny folding chair, on the other hand, looks like a torture device. You go ahead, detective. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. Forget right. about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, Excellent, uh, Mr. Dubois. Look into that I can right see now. that you're a reasonable man, and reasonable men, reasonable men can be of great use to one another. Yeah. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most uncomfortable chair in the world. Damn. It's violating your backside. Oh, uh, by the way. I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. This should take care of that nonsense. <laughs> it should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. Hey, that's 25 real. That's good money. Think of all the stuff you could. Is there anything you'd like to say to me? Or... No. No, it's cool. Cool? I wouldn't go that far. I'm sure there are cooler things than delivering a comically oversized novelty check to a cafeteria manager. But, sure, if that's what's cool nowadays. Hey, listen. You might think of it as a bribe. I think of it as you just waste 25 real and I get to sleep in my fucking hotel for another night. So... Now... Win -win I'd like to me. set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, Union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. Alright, now, I'll be, I'll be honest, I've played this game before, and I remember this part a lot. Let, let's see if I freak out just the same. His slug-like lips yep. move, but all you hear is an echo. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. No, Are you all right, Harry? This. You say you got this, but you seem a little anxious to me. Don't be. Everything's going to be all right. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. Okay. Officer, okay. we will deal with this later. We don't need Mr. Clare's help with this. I wouldn't be so sure about that. All right, well, just don't panic. God, you're sweating. Your knee is jerking. You're about to cry, aren't you? You're about to cry because you lost your gun and those children are going to shoot themselves with it. Oh, no. You want to cry? God, you're weak. Whatever you do, don't cry. You'll think you're disgusting. It's, wow, th Mr. that's Dubois, what I really care. You don't look so good. What nope. is this, Mr. Dubois? He keeps repeating. What is he trying to pull here? You need to cool the fuck down. Chill. Mr. Dubois! Yeah. Mr. Dubois! Harry! Uh. Mr. Dubois, are you okay? Can I get you a glass of water or something? Are you having some kind of medical emergency? Maybe you could use your hands somehow, in a kind of throw-in motion, like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. He's Mr. Dubois. Oh yeah, man, I'm fucking great. Don't be dramatic. I can see your condition isn't terminal. What an odd demonstration of... Huh. You got me, Harry. I don't even know what. 
As entertaining as it was, I'm afraid we're wasting our time. And I'm an extremely busy man, as I'm sure you are too. Okay, yeah. enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Quick, here's your window. Get yourself together and ask him questions. Police officer questions. It is about time to stop embarrassing yourself. Questions will help you regain some of your lost dignity. Okay, first things first, hanging. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martinez. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to discuss it with you. Thanks. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines. Incredibly talented at opening doors. Kim, what do you think? I'm not sure I understand. If you're asking us to break down someone's door, it's not going to happen. Come now. I just need you to go open a little door for me and leave it unlocked. A simple thing. Absolutely nothing shady about it. Does this jiggling ooze think he's going to use you? He's got <laughs> another thing coming. Play his game, son. With your eyes peeled. He's going to slip up. And when he does, you're going to come out on top. Aren't you just open it yourself? Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. You look like you could run around all day. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. So what will it be, Harry? Oh, uh, no it? one's. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. What do you mean by a weasel? A loud blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. Just go there, unlock the door, and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. I bet you don't even know anything about that. Harry, my dear friend, I am what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Martinez. Okay, of so, course, so. Harry, I understand. But if that's the case, I don't think we'll ever find your gun. Even worse, we won't be able to speak like equals about the murder. Perhaps this was just bad timing for you. Know that you can always come back to me. I really hope you do. For your sake, my sake, and for your gun's sake too. Yes, we both understand what you meant. This may be the only way, he thinks. I won't hold it against you. In fact, we probably should reconsider later. What's my like dear there? Harry, there are literally millions of... Harry, special. you smooth-talking son of a bitch. <laughs> Time is a precious resource, and I don't have enough of it to count containers with you. Smooth-talking? Maybe that's the way to go about opening the container. You should at least try convincing it. Yeah, totally. Uh... Do you get a dead body down from a tree? You might have noticed there's one hanging on a tree behind the hostel cafeteria. Oh my! Don't take this question personally, but why would I get involved in this matter? Mr. Clare, the man was hanged with a cargo belt. A steel reinforced cargo belt. It's safe to assume the Union had something to do with the murder. Besides, getting the body down would benefit all of us. It's a stain on the neighborhood. You're a community leader. Help your community out, Evar. I can certainly see how having him up there might start affecting some real estate values. But of course, all joking aside, I am going to help you. Jean-Luc, my boy, I'm sending two police officers down. They have a dead body in a tree problem they need help with. Namely, they need it to be taken down. And Jean, please take it easy with the race signs. That's a yes to getting the body down, no to the race signs. <laughs> you can find Jean-Luc down at the gates. He's the big impressive one. You know, tattoos, muscles, 
ethnic looking. Can't miss him. Great guy. Yes, yes, Harry. You are obviously in peak physical condition, and I salute both your initiative and your physical prowess. Very impressive, Harry. Very impressive. You should call me Mr. DeBoss. Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everard, I call you Harry. That's what the Hang Corpse called you. Harry. So that's my really god, my so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? I have a big fat folder on you, Harry. I'm sure you have a lot of questions to ask. Maybe I can help you out. Don't trust him. For all you know, Dubois might be his name. You need to confirm this. I'm uh. sure you had some concerns you thought I might be able to address. And you were probably right. I can. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. Uh. Let's get it's straight. Harry. Where's my full name? Harry Dubois. You don't feel like either one of these things. You know what your name is. You have a sophisticated name, like that of a count or a beautiful man. That's not my name. My name is Raphael Castell. Fine, Harry. You can even be Harry Raphael Dubois de Costo, or whatever you choose to be. Sweet. <sighs> Mr. Kitsuragi doesn't seem even slightly empathetic to your memory loss, Harry. I, however, wish to help you any way I can. Hmm. Well, Harry, Sam. if I were to sum you up in one word, it would be apologetic. I'm sorry. Yes. You seem to be. A lot of the time. But right now, there's no reason to be. Let loose a little. Be you. I have a wife or family? kids? Harry, you're not a family man. There's not one peep of family in here. Unless you think you're a family man. Do you strike yourself as a family man, Harry? No. That's why I like you, Harry. A good man knows both his strengths and his weaknesses. And you, my friend. You are one of the all-time greats. All right. Everard's large hands Damn. are covering the folder, but the look on his face says, I know everything about you, Harry. Have oh, it. Harry. Uh, oh, wow. This is really something. I'm sure it's not that bad. At worst, he has an old RCM folder, and I very much doubt even that. So how about it, Harry? You need assistance, I presume? How did you ah, get that folder? This? My friends in your organization gave it to me, Harry. I find that very suspicious. May I have a look? I'm afraid this is meant for Union eyes only, Mr. Kitsuragi. I'm sure you understand. Of course, Harry, of course. Let's not linger on personal details and amnesia. I'm told what? you're involved in the local Harry, program. how could you say that to me? You know I appreciate a joke as much as any Johnny Fat Guy, but I can't take slander. Are you actually investigating this? No, You've no. hurt me, Harry. Me, a friend. But you know what? And gets over it in two seconds. Seems like it didn't really hurt him. I trust you, like I trust all my friends. And I know you'll never talk to me about this again, because you don't want to wound me. So do what you want, and let's change the subject. Thank you for your understanding. We will continue to do what we must. You too, Lieutenant. <laughs> you know, I like you. But you never were my favorite. I'm a Harry guy. I'm Team Harry. None taken. Did we have anything else to do here, Harry? Uh. Nah. Wait. You need this to get in and out through the gate. Great. We don't want to get stuck in there. Here. You're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. So, do I have to talk to Kim right now? Is that we should the think about calling it today, maybe. The nights are still miserably cold this time of year. Uh. You should take care of that, then. Let's talk to him anyway. An officer of the RCM shouldn't be sleeping in the street. We'll figure something out. Though he finds this situation frustrating, he is doing his best to not make you feel any worse than you already do. Oh, thanks, Kim. I, I would love to leave. I'm so puzzled as to how to get out. 
How did I get in here? How do I leave? I thought I just walked forward. Oh, there, there we go. It's very confusing. Okay, there. Uh, see anything new to ask Leo? Oh, hey, mister. I need to be back to talk with old Leo here. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. It's like Lady Larice said when she opened a bathhouse in the basement of my apartment building. They can only get so far before they're aching to get back. And lots of folk really did keep coming back. No trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all.